Hello fellow Arcasians, my name is ATK and I'm working alongside Amazon Games to show you an exciting new class coming up, the Slayer. Slayer is a recent class that has become a favorite of mine that I'm currently playing a lot. She is a female version of the Berserker class who wields a greatsword. This class's unique attribute is the Fury Meter. Just like the male Berserker class, this meter fills up as you land attacks on your foes. When this meter is full, you can unleash your rage and enter Berserker mode. You will gain additional movement speed, attack speed, crit rate, and additional bonuses based on class engravings. Pressing your Z key during transformation will unleash a powerful bloodlust skill as well. The Slayer's fighting style and abilities have many variations based on builds and playstyle preference. Let's go over her skills first, then review the best practices, playstyle, and builds. The skills are grouped into three categories, main DPS, meter gain, and utility. Going over the major DPS skills, we have Guillotine, Brutal Impact, and Volcanic Eruption. There are also skills like Furious Claw, Mountain Cleave, Punishing Draw, and Fatal Sword that can be used for DPS as well, based on your tripods. Many skill tripods are based on your player's preference. For example, her major DPS skill Brutal Impact can be adjusted for maximum damage or additional mobility for accuracy. I recommend you to test them in Trixion Training Grounds before investing. Second category is Meter Gain Skills. The purpose of these skills is to gain Fury Meter as much as possible. Skills like Spinning Sword and Ground Smash are often used along with multi-purpose skills like Flash Blade, Cruel Pierce, and Wild Stomp. The last category is Utility Skills. Slayer has an additional mobility skill called Wild Rush. The skill is often recommended for newer players to add two additional dashes for extra mobility. The Wild Stomp skill I've mentioned earlier can also provide self buffs and synergy effects based on the tripods equipped. The two Slayer's Awakenings are Execute and Rachna Break, both are really cool attacks with slightly different functions. Execute is focused towards more meter gain and destruction, whereas Rachna Break is a pure powerful damaging hit. Every playstyle's basic skill structure starts with three major DPS skills equipped with one or two utility skills. Based on the player's preference, different skills are added with specific tripods to achieve their preferred builds. There are so many playstyle variations you can build based on your collection of runes and accessories. Slayer has two major class engravings, Predator and Punisher. The Predator class engraving is a beginner-friendly, low-resource requirement build where her main combat stat is Swiftness. High Swiftness playstyle's major advantage is low cooldowns and fast mobility. Accessory distributions should be focused on all Swiftness while the necklace being Swift and Crit. The recommended relic equipment is Earth's Entropy due to almost all of her skills focusing on back attacks. But Hallucination Set also works if you have trouble landing back attacks. Predator class engraving will lock your Z identity skill, but you will consistently gain Fury Meter and mana as long as you're landing your attacks. With increased critical damage of 40%, you will gradually lose more Fury Meter every fatigue stack. So you can't stay transformed indefinitely but the longer you're transformed, the shorter your exhaustion penalty will be, allowing you to transform again very shortly. Since you're automatically refreshing your meter after your initial transformation, this build actually does not need any meter gain skills. Therefore, you can add more DPS skills to your kit like Fury Blade, Final Blow, and Fatal Sword. This playstyle's goal is to land your attacks as much as you can to keep yourself transformed. Make sure to mix in your normal attacks as well if all your skills happen to be on cooldown. Runes are often equipped with Gale Winds, Focus Runes, and Quick Recharge for faster casting speed and reduced mana costs. Plan your rotation based on your synergy skill. You have a choice between using Wild Stomp and Flash Blade for synergy buffs. This example rotation is a beginner-friendly build with level 7 Wild Rush skill added for extra mobility. Flash Blade, Fury Blade, Guillotine, Punishing Draw, Final Blow, then Flash Blade again to Brutal Impact and Volcanic Eruption. The skill order isn't fixed, but group those sets of 5 skills and 3 skills, both always starting with Flash Blade for synergy. Usually your Flash Blade will come back first about 0.5 to 1 second. If that is the case, make sure you wait for your other DPS skills to come back and cool down to use them together as a combo. Second tripod on the first roll for Wild Rush is also a good choice to get an additional burn damage to gain some extra Fear Meter and mana per hit. Generally, your goal is to keep landing your attacks until over 20 fatigue stacks to transform again in a very short time. Since bosses move around and teleport, it is crucial to be aggressive with this playstyle with the mobility and swiftness provided. 
The next play style is based on the Punisher class engraving. The Punisher class engraving build is a little more complex due to it being a specialization stat focused class. The spec combat stat impacts your fury meter gain and your overall damage. So if you do not have enough specialization combat stat, meter gain tripods and wealth roots, you won't be able to transform fast enough, therefore the build won't work. Accessory distribution should be focused on all specialization while the necklace has spec and swift. This build's relic gear set is fixed with Earth's entropy. You will see higher damage numbers overall, but this playstyle is very difficult to play due to slower attack animations and difficult positioning. The engraving itself provides 25% additional damage with 20% additional crit rate for the Z Identity Bloodlust skill. Your goal is to rotate all your major DPS skills within 16 seconds of transformation time for maximum damage. The build complexity comes from number of various attribute requirements. Some builds range anywhere from 1530 to 1830 spec combat stat with level 5 tripods and 4 to 5 wolf runes. All of these requirements are very difficult to achieve and each player has different collections of attributes. If you happen to not have the required tripods or runes, having a higher combat stat will balance out the cycle rotation. It is very important to test out your build based on your resources you have in Trixian Training Grounds to find which combinations work for you. You can reference this chart to determine your meter gain skill choices. I've noted the differences and require tripods between them. Feel free to pause the video here for reference. Starting with the bare minimum, make sure your spinning sword has legendary wealth runes with level 5 focus tripod. Onward, there are multiple skills that can impact your meter gain. Some give more, some give less with additional utility. For example, skills like Punishing Strike can be used for counters, whereas Ground Smash has super armor. Take note that some skills will require more combat stats to be properly effective for playstyle variations. Let's go over a sample build. The goal of the Punisher playstyle is to rotate all your major DPS skills during transformation. And by the time the major DPS skills are back in cooldown, your goal is to get ready to transform again. First, you need to equip the three main DPS skills, Guillotine, Brutal Impact, and Volcano Eruption. Then you have to add either Flash Blade or Wild Stomp as your synergy skill. Make sure you know that Wild Stomp can either be a synergy skill or a meter gain skill. Your four other slots can all be meter gain skills. As long as your transformation time is faster than your Brutal Impact cooldown, you'll have a proper build. All variations of this playstyle are very straightforward. Successfully land all your meter gain skills usually starting with the synergy skill. Transform, Position, then land your major DPS skills after your synergy is added. Then repeat the cycle again from the start. With this knowledge in mind, let's talk about the 1.5 cycle build. This is the most popular build due to its versatility and mobility due to Wild Rush addition in this skill kit. The key to this rotation is casting Spinning Sword two times, with addition to three other meter gain skills to transform quickly. Cooldown Tripod and Cooldown Gems are extremely important here, on the Spinning Sword especially because you need to cast it twice before the major DPS skills comes off cooldown. Here are some of the examples of skill sets and requirements for reference. Remember that all these existing skill cycles are based off of the fundamental thought process we just talked about. First one is Spinning Sword, Wild Stomp, Flash Blade, Furious Claw, wait for the cooldowns to come back, then Flash Blade, Spinning Sword, then Stomp to transform. This requires Wild Stomp as meter gain skill, with Flash Blade as synergy skill. Since Flash Blade is a quick skill, you can use this skill to keep your adrenaline stack if the engraving is being used. Second example is Spinning Sword, Wild Stomp, Furious Claw, Ground Smash, wait for the cooldowns to come back, Spinning Sword, then Wild Stomp again to transform. This uses Wild Stomp as a synergy skill, which lasts longer for more comfortable play but requires a little bit more specialization. Remember, there are so many variations you can create, it is important for everyone to test and come up with their own personal cycles. Just remember to fit everything in two Spinning Sword casts. Cool thing is that Spinning Sword's first tripod on the third roll provides much higher meter, but a lot harder to land. For those of you who are afraid of obtaining high level tripods, there are level 1 tripod meter gain skills as well, like Furious Claw and Punishing Draw. Feel free to rewind the video to go back into the charts again to test out some more combinations. If you happen to be a newer player to the game, don't worry. There are also beginner-friendly builds where you're allowed to replace one DPS skill with a meter gain skill. You might do a little bit less DPS, but the value is the ability to transform even if you miss one of the skills completely. 
For current players and returning players with larger collections, I will share two more cool variations that some players use. First is the One Cycle build, which requires extremely high specialization with all wealth runes and tripods. This playstyle is for people who want to transform as fast as possible. However, this build is missing mobility skills with heavy penalty if you miss your skills. There are no skill rotation for the One Cycle build. You will need to try to land all of your meter gain skills perfectly to transform right away. Second build is a 6 second cycle build. This build also requires extremely high specialization. This is the build I am personally using at the moment. This build's key point is changing Wild Stomp's skill tripod into cooldown tripod to make the skill about 6 seconds long. So the next rotation of Wild Stomp skill will activate the transformation all the time. The rotation uses Flash Blade, Wild Stomp, Furious Claw, Spinning Sword, Ground Smash in any order, then Flash Blade and Stomp again to transform. This variation can utilize the short cooldown of the Wild Stomp and Flash Blade for easy adrenaline stack upkeep and utilizing short downtime of Wild Stomp's buff to offset the lack of mobility skills. Also, if you have extremely high specialization of 1828+, plus, you can open rune choices for Flash Blade for bleed, quick recharge, or cleanse runes. Next, let's talk about engravings a little bit. Slayer engravings are generally set in stone. You have two class engraving of your choice and grudge. Next up, we have Raid Captain. It is your next mandatory engraving for both class builds. This is due to transformation providing 20% additional movement speed. Along with the yearning buff from your support and swiftness combat stats, this engraving is very efficient for Slayer. Next, we have Master of Ambush. Unless you're playing a hallucination version of the Predator build, Slayer is a full back attacker class that can take full advantage of this engraving. Your 5th and 6th engraving is usually choices between Cursed Doll, Adrenaline, and Increased Mass. You can also take level 1 Aether Predator as well. Lastly, I wanted to highlight some quick play tips. 1. Don't be pressured to land all your attacks on the back. For Executioner build, meter skills don't account for too much of your total DPS, so just focus on landing them for meter gain. 2. Mix in as many normal attacks as possible if all skills are on cooldown. Normal attack also provides decent damage while adjusting your position a little bit. Predator build also provides you mana and fury meter too. 3. Don't forget to use your synergy skills first before landing your major skills. A lot of people forget about this. 4. Try to gain identity meter even when raid bosses are in damage reduction. Sometimes bosses are in damage reduction phase through cutscenes and transformation. Try to gather some meter at this time to get ready to transform as soon as the phase starts. 5. Some tripods can be changed to sacrifice damage for comfort and mobility. Brutal Impact's third tripod on the second row adds a dash. I personally use this to add mobility while sacrificing a little bit of damage. My back attack accuracy definitely went up a lot when I started using this. 6. Don't feel pressured to start with the high-end requirement builds. You can work your way up. The damage difference is not that significant. It is more important to test out and find the build that works for you for higher performance and more comfortable play. With that, this concludes the video. My name is ATK, and thank you Amazon Games and the Lost Star community once again for giving me this awesome opportunity to talk about this cool new class. Good luck on your adventures in Arcasia, everyone. Bye-bye!